It's a Partridge Bartley traditional. There we are, and it's a three-o, which is really it's a good size for that uh, hook. But anyway, I'm, to help cover it and speed up the time process, I'm going to use quite a wide, or quite a. This is a 140. It's a UTC thread, which is quite wide, better for the bigger flies. Now, when you start the thread, just about a mil and a half from the eye. Bring it down, you'll see the bent the bent piece of wire. I usually bring it down to the very end of that. Now I'm gonna do I'm actually gonna wind materials onto a bare hook. Now most times I wouldn't recommend you to do this. And uh, the main reason for this is that if you wind onto a base of thread it should be much, much stronger. But I'm gonna go against the rules. Now I've got a lagerton, this is a, a large gold pencil. Need a length of this off. And I'm going to use as well, this is number 16 as a silver oval tinsel. Number 16 is a large so now all I'm going to do is catch this on the underside, the silver first, and then I'm going to catch in the, the gold tinsel. Now I've waxed the thread really, really well so that when I tie this on, nothing will ever pull out or get into the, the material. And all I'm doing is working all the way down, touching turns. If you run out of wax on the thread, just get a quick coat. Now I keep the wax on the side of my finger so I can add the wax whenever I need it. Just work your way down. This is a fishing fly, it's not for show. So I want the strength. Now winding the thread down until whenever I let the bobbin holder go, the thread should be in line with the point of the hook. Like this point there. The first quarter of the, the body, or third of the body, sorry, I'm just going to use a, a red wool. Now there's three fly or whatever you want to call it. Three lengths in there and I'm removing one of them so there's only obviously two left. And we tie this in on that first third nice and tight and wind it up. To that point there. Then open out the turns and then work your way up. Cross your thread, two or three turns down, and trim it the full length of the body. And then I'm going to get myself a spay hackle. There's two or three types you can get. Now I've got one here, which basically it's got a broken tip on it. Now you can still use these. These are feathers that are what do you call it? They're not. Don't throw them away. I mean, there's a kind of hole one. That's what it should be looking like. If the tip's broken off them, in this case. You can still use it, I can still tie that in, I'm just going to show you what to do. I'm just going to draw it back, put the tip in, nice and tight. Now make sure you watch your thread. Draw these fibres back. And then I'm going to get some black wool, a good length. And again I'm going to remove one of these, one of the fibres. It's just too heavy for this fly. I don't like it too much. And again, I'm going to tie this on the full length of the body. Take it up. Now I've left it. There's a space there. You can always slightly go back. Now I can compensate a wee bit with that by opening up the turns and building up the body. So your way up the hook shank, tying everything in is best way you can. Stop it round about say 3 mil or so from the end of the head. Now what I'm going to do here is open up the turns and 
and do a full turn at the back and then work my way up just forming a nice shape keeping everything nice and smooth to get to that point there, across your thread three or four turns, tie it down make sure you wax your thread at that point now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change threads I'm going to a finer thread I prefer the uni thread the round, it's actually a round thread and this is a flat thread and I'm just going to use an 8 thread which gives you a nice fine head change them over, just tie over the top and then remove your UTC and then what I normally do is bring the tinsel rib the opposite way I actually wind everything on nice and tight at the back stretch it out, don't be shy to stretch out the tinsel so just have a wee quick look make sure your hackle's up Oops. all the way up well the distance so they're equal you're looking around about five turns or so and then come across your thread make sure you get a few turns in and then well, you can actually bend and break this off because it is a tinsel and there we go then I'm going to bring up spay hackle now, see the, the fine fluff fibres I don't mind these, I actually like these in the fly I'm just drawing them back and then work my way up, now I'm going to counter rib the hackles the hackle with this, I'm just going to follow up now this is a fishing fly, I want it to stay together so, oops, just let down my hand and I want the rib to come across and hold the hackle at this point here, just see how much hackle I've got left Now everyone's got their own way of tying these. Mine's is made up more for to make sure the fly stays together. Trim away your hackle. Make sure there's wax on your thread. Just leave everything just now. Just draw out or lift out these hackle fibres. And then bring your silver rib the normal way. Now I'm just going to make sure I can come across that. Now all you've got to do is just take your time. Just draw these fibres back as you go. Counter ribbon or coming over the centre of each turn of the gold. And at the same time what you'll do is you'll tie in the hackle. Just work your way up. Just watch how things are going. Hackle most times will get out of the way for you. Mainly what's holding this fly together is the silver, or the oval tinsel. Once you come underneath, catch it. Nice and tight. Now I usually just bear the, the core. And then tighten up, nice and tight. Again, make sure there's wax on your thread. And there we go. Take away the excess. Now I'm going to have a sunburst tackle here. I've got one of the large. It's a Chinese neck. And you always get the odd soft tackle at the back. And you only want a turn or two of this. A couple of turns down onto the tip of the hackle. So break this off and draw it back. That's fine. Cross your thread. Now you could get another fly out of this hackle, so don't throw it away. And 
and again I'm going to tie in this case here Got teal hackle quite a dark feather this now you could tear away one side which I'm going to do I'll for the tip of the hackle in fold it back I can break this off Again, you only need, you don't need to go crazy with the turns. So we quick look and see how things are sitting. Now that's plenty, plenty of hackle there. Cross your thread. Nice and tight, just make sure you secure that down before you do anything else. And again, make sure you wax your thread. Nice and tight. And then very important at this point, make sure you've got a nice base of thread down before you tie, try and tie in your wing. Quite a look, that looks fine to me. I usually like to try and separate or just draw these fibres on the side. Now I've got a bronze mallard feathers, I've got two. As you can see I've started to separate feathers I want. Now you could double up the wing depending on the size of the fly and I'm going to do that in this fly. Just remove the, the rubbish at the bottom. Now as we quick look see at this point you can still move them around. They don't have the wing too wide. I'm going to tear them off. That's for the under wing. And this is for the top. And you can tear it off. Do the same on the other side. The under wing doesn't have to be perfect. It's, it's act acting as like support to the main wing at the top. And you really need to actually, you really need to increase the thickness of your wing anyway. Depends the size of the fly. Once it's when it's still on the feather, you've got still plenty of options where to where to take it. I'm just trying to make sure everything's lined up because sometimes you get the odd feather twisted, and when it's still on the feather, you're on the you can move, you can actually bring it back in, you can marry it back. Now I actually like to tear it off. Now I've got my underwing first. I don't fight the feather. I've got two slips here, just line up the ends. I'm just going to have it tips to the barb of the hook. I'm just going to line one top. And I'm just going to lightly bring the thread turn over two or three times. And just see how they're sitting. And you see how low these are sitting. And that's basically, you can stop at that. You mean that a single wing is be fine in an all on a smaller fly. And we tighten up again and then remove these, the waist. Now I would basically tidy up again and I've waxed the thread, make sure I've got a nice base. Come in with another two feathers, two lengths, much exactly the same. Bring them just slightly longer. Now I like to bring these ends down come in nice and tight. I'm hardly touching that. I'm just pushing the weight of the bobbin. I want to see where it's going to sit. Now that looks about okay. You got a nice roof on it. If you're happy you can tighten up. You want the wing quite low. A nice taper. And then come in. Now I've waxed the thread so that it holds extremely well. And then just come in, tidy up. Just form a nice head. And then what 
finish. The rail hut finishing and forming ahead, making sure everything's covered. And remove the base piece. And there you go. And then all I do, I like to put a layer of super glue on. Just touch it along. Which the reason I like to use super glue is it seals the turns a thread all the way around and that then tidies up everything else, then I coat a clear and not sure. Get it nice and low. Nice length in the hackle. No overdress, don't overdress the fly. Now once that's dry I can quickly put up some varnish on it just to finish it, give you an idea of what it looks like. Super glue dries extremely quick. Especially if it's brand new and fresh. Don't keep super glue too long because it just goes off. And there we are. Mm.